Howdy, Tinker Nerds. So I've got a book coming out. Blimey, Gov. Do tell. And in it, I lay out the details of how to make some of the more popular projects that I've done on this channel. One of which is my CD-ROM drive 3D printer. And while it wasn't the prettiest creation that's ever graced this earth, it definitely worked, and so I left it at that. But considering how popular of a topic it ended up being, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a deeper look at how to make one and potentially how to make it better. But this time, I want to get your feedback as I'm making it. Because let's face it, you guys have good ideas. <clears throat> Often better than mine. So by sending me your brain power, I think that we can make this project a lot better. So leave your feedback in the comments, tweet me, friendster me, myspace me, google plus me, or facebook me. All right, where do we begin? How about an explanation of what the Ico Ico one day we're doing? Obviously we're trying to make a 3D printer, but what does that mean? 3D printers are devices that can make three-dimensional objects. And there are lots of different types of 3D printing methods out there, but the one that we're going to be looking at is the fused filament fabrication method, mainly because it's the simplest mechanically. What we have is a device that melts strands of plastic and squirts it out onto a surface. Then we have a series of motors and rails that move the melting device in three dimensions so that it can create a shape out of the melted plastic. The machine continues to fuse together melted layers of plastic on top of each other until the 3D shape is made. Narrowing it down to its most basic components, we have the melting and extruding mechanism and the motors and rails that move that around. The motor and rails are basically a motor that moves a platform linearly along guided rails. So if we're going to make a 3D printer, that is one of the qualifications that we have to have. And luckily you can find these sliding mechanisms littered all throughout computing history. You can find them in scanners and printers, and you guessed it, optical drives. Optical disk drives, the ones that you find on desktop computers and old DVD players or gaming consoles, had a motor and rail mechanism that would slide the tray, or as I like to call it, the cup holder, in and out. But how do we get the motor and sliding rail system out of it? Time for some invasive surgery. If the drive is in a computer, the first step is figuring out how to remove it. In most desktops, it generally involves removing a few screws. On game consoles or DVD players, it may require a little bit more effort. But once you've extracted it, it should look something similar to this. The outer casing may have a couple screws, but basically just pops off. And then you get to this treasure trove of hackable parts. Lasers, gears, springs, buttons, motors, all just waiting for the chance to be upcycled. Nerding out. Okay, focus. Unscrewing the circuit board, removing some of these ribbon cables, and removing this plastic tray and casing reveals this metal tray mechanism that has a small stepper motor and one or two metal rails. This tray is what slides the laser back and forth so that it can read data from the optical disc. We found the booty, now let's control it. I probably could have phrased that differently. One of the easiest ways to control servo motors is using an Arduino. Could you use a Raspberry Pi? Sure, but it's a little bit over kill compared to just using an Arduino. To assist in controlling the stepper motor, an Arduino generally needs a motor controller board such as a SparkFun Easy Driver stepper motor controller board. Or if you can find a cheaper equivalent on Alibaba, you can go that route too. For me, connecting the motor to the controller board required soldering new wires to each of the cable posts on the motor. The stepper motors in optical drives are generally bipolar stepper motors, essentially meaning that they have two coils that alternate electrical currents. And there are two wires per coil, a positive and negative one. The two on the left we can connect to section A on the driver board, and the other two we can connect to section B. These two pins are for an external power supply, and these three go to the Arduino. One going to ground, and the other two for stepping and direction go to the digital pins on the Arduino. All right, we can use some of the code gleaned from the SparkFun user guide page to load up to the Arduino. And powering it up, we can test it out. Skynet, I am your master. That is a good first step, but there's a lot more to do before we end up with a 3D printer. So at this point, I want to get your feedback. Are there any special tips or tricks I should know about optical drive stepper motors? What would you do with the parts from an optical drive? If you wanted to make your own super cheap 3D printer, how would you go about it? 
let me know in the comments below. Got any ideas? You can submit your own or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, subscribing, or following me on social media. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.